Hello sailors, this is the Dodger Kebab and you're watching 20 pre-vanilla Warcraft facts. As many of you know, I like uncovering secrets from World of Warcraft's past. I'm not a fan of these memories of the past to simply be a text post on some forum somewhere. I want people to actually be able to see them in some form. So, a YouTube video is the perfect way to preserve the history of World of Warcraft. Some of these are quite obscure and others have been talked about in the past, but I wanted to get them all all into one video to act as a whole package of information. The first one on the list has all but been forgotten. Back in the 2003 Alpha World of Warcraft, miners could mass smelt copper. Instead of smelting one copper bar at a time from copper ore, you could do 10 at a time. This spell was actually still present in the vanilla code of the game and using GM commands on my home server called Kebabcraft, I can once again get mass smelting of copper working again. Now two more spells that were removed, but I've rolled them into one point as I've covered them both before. The first is Planes Running, which was a Tauren only ability. This was removed just before Vanilla went on sale to the public. It was removed so close to launch that it was mentioned in the game instruction manual, which had already been printed and shipped before Blizzard decided to remove this spell. Originally, Tauren didn't have mounts as they were too large, so they had an ability to make them run at mount speed. Because this made all sorts of game balance problems, Blizzard changed this at the last minute. The other ability in this point is Cadgar's Unlocking for Mages. During beta, mages could learn a pick locking spell called Cadgar's Unlocking, which used the tiny keys as a reagent. I always thought it was a shame that Blizzard removed this ability. You might have heard a rumour that once upon a time, rogues and hunters could use shields. This is almost true. Back in the 2003 Alpha World of Warcraft, shields and bucklers were actually two separate item types. Bucklers were less powerful shields, which could be used by hunters and rogues. Warriors could use bucklers or shields, but before the game's release, Blizzard merged bucklers and shields into one item type and then took away rogues and hunters' ability to hold any type of shield. See this 2003 Alpha Warcraft screenshot? Apart from the fact that this is from before auction houses were built and the auctioneers would just stand by the cart in Stormwind's trade district. Notice that the back items are actually listed under the male armour section. This is because back items used to come in cloth, leather, mail and plate types and not just back items as its own thing. On vanilla private servers you can still see that auction houses still have all the old sections even though all back items now count as cloth. One I've covered in the past so I'll try and be quick is the survival skills profession. During alpha and beta campfires were not part of the cooking skill they were part of the survival skills profession you could make different types of campfire everyone knows the basic campfire but you could also make bright campfire which gave a higher spirit buff general supply vendors also used to sell an item called unlit poor torch these could be lit from your campfires to help light up dark areas of the game and provide further buffs to you and your party Probably the largest gameplay change on this entire list is the total rework Blizzard did on the talent and skill mechanic. Back in early 2003 Alpha Warcraft, every time you leveled up you would gain talent points and skill points. So first of all the talent points you gained each level would be spent on the talent tab in your character sheet. Here you had a huge amount of choice over which direction you would take your character. This created a huge amount of difference between people that knew that what they were doing and those that did not. The skill points that you learn at each level could be spent on a number of different things. You could decide to put them into your weapon skills to increase your ability with certain types of weapon or combat type, or you could put them into a profession because things like blacksmithing, cooking, first aid, etc. all required skill points to learn. This is back when you're not limited to how many professions you could learn. Under this system, it was possible to have max level characters who didn't really really have very good offensive skills but were brilliant at item creation. Another gameplay system that was changed before launch was the rested system. These days you are either rested by logging out in a city or an inn and can gain extra XP from killing mobs or you are not. Back in alpha there was four different types
Pat's estates, you could be very rested and gain 200% experience points from killing mobs. You could be rested and gain 150 experience points from killing mobs. Normal would be the standard 100% experience rate. And finally, you had tired. This would reduce your experience rate from mobs to just 50%. In Alpha, there was no cap on the amount of people you could have in a dungeon party. You can see here in this very old screenshot that there were nine people in this Deadmines group. I've cheated a little bit with this one as the dungeon cap on groups wasn't introduced until patch 1.3 but it was so early in Warcraft's life that it wasn't in the release game for very long at all. Another one of these I've cheated on a little bit is unlinked flight points. As of patch 1.10 they were all linked but before that and all through Alpha and Beta Warcraft they were not. As you can see in this screenshot of early Alpha. So what this meant was that if you wanted to fly from Storwind to South Shore you'd have to fly to Ironforge first. If you were playing in beta, you had time to look over the mental talent trees and wonder what on earth you were going to pick. Then you'd land at Ironforge and you'd have to select South Shore from the next flight master. Some areas in Alpha were quite different. Here in Donassus, you can see that the flight master area is in the actual city rather than outside it. I guess this was changed to prevent players from having to sit through the long flight down the tree every time. Stormwind also went through a few changes. The area around the stockade had a lot more water so if you needed to go over here you were going to get wet. Around the city there also used to be a lot of vendor stands. I guess players could stand here to indicate that they had stuff to sell quickly. Would have been good for the players that put all their skill points into professions rather than combat abilities. Finally the courtroom in the Dwarven district of Stormwind was actually the Dwarven Embassy. Not sure why this was changed before release though. One everyone and their dog knows is that Ironforge used to be a lot larger in the 2003 alpha version. It had an upper level as well as an inner ring of shops and houses. Before the auction house and bank were built, there was an area called the Dwarven Bazaar, which I guessed would have housed those things. Near the library, you could find the flight master point. This was mainly because the center chamber was totally different. The Great Forge was a huge machine and left no room for a flight master. Strangely though, in alpha, separate little forges were in this room for miners to use. When Blizzard was first creating World of Warcraft, they really liked the idea of putting raid entrances at the end of dungeons. Molten Core was at the end of Blackrock Depths, Blackwing Lair was at the end of Blackrock Spire, and Naxxaramis was going to be at the end of Stratholm. If you use GM commands on the vanilla Warcraft server, you can still see the Naxxaramis instant entrance by opening the gates that normal players can't open. But during Alpha, these gates were not there and you could just walk on through. If you did, you'd see Naxram is f just floating there. It's just for show at this point and it's not solid at, at all. I tried to land on it and just flew straight through. Another dungeon that was quite different in the 2003 alpha version was the Scarlet Monastery. We all know it as the four wing dungeon area now or whatever this monstrosity has turned it into but back in alpha the monastery was just one large dungeon. It had sections that would later be cut up and extended into the four winged area that launched in vanilla. I I actually did a separate video where I ran through the whole thing and that is what you're seeing now. I've just sped, sped it up here for the sake of the video but after why not just go and take a look at that. Here's a dungeon that was cut out altogether fairly late in development. This is the Stormwind Vault and is located within the prison complex in Stormwind City. If you do play on a vanilla private server and manage to somehow no clip through the lock gate the instant portal inside actually works and takes you to this unfinished instance. Obviously this is is something that was still being worked on through Alpha and Beta Warcraft and must have been dropped fairly late into development. As you can see, it looks a lot like the Stormwind Stockade, but it has a different layout. Another dungeon that was actually finished before Vanilla even launched was the Black Morass. Actually, all of the cabins at the time was finished too, but the Black Morass was finished well before Beta closed. Not just that either, but Blizzard actually did a large unreleased section of the Black Morass that was cut and not not even included with the dungeon when it did see release with the Burning Crusade. There was a fair bit of content that was in Alpha Warcraft that didn't see release until the Burning Crusade too. Like this, Karazhan. Again, this is one I've covered before but to leave it off this list would be criminal. So here in this video, but sped up, is me walking around Karazhan in the pre-release 0.7 beta client build of the game. Very different to the version we actually got in the Burning Crusade. It's a hell of a lot wider and taller for a star.
not. A couple of rooms made it from this version to the final one, but it's mainly a different thing altogether. To complete the trifecta of Burning Crusade items of content that were actually in the alpha and beta builds of the vanilla game, here we have the Outland. We would come to know this area as Hellfire Peninsula, and what you can see here is all completed content before vanilla even launched. Even though the graphics and layout are totally different to what we would get in the Burning Crusade, the style is very much the same. The red and orange colour palette, the look of a war zone and weird floating stuff around. Back to the Eastern Kingdoms now and two islands just off the coast of Stranglethorn Vale, Gila Jim's Isle and the island of Dr Lapidus. Both were deleted after the alpha build 0.5 but somehow still managed to be included in some versions of the game map. Both of these places look very much like STV and they had a fair amount of work put into them. The one you're looking at now is Gila Jim's Isle and someone even made a fan map of it. The other island is the island of Dr Lapidus. It's a very outdoor maze like sort of affair. Strange place. Does have a large chunk which was unfinished before it was deleted but interesting nonetheless. The last item on this list is the Ajara Crater. A fully fleshed out PvP battleground for some reason never put into the final version. This one is a real shame as it looks really nice. The graphics and art direction are brilliant. I really hope a project like Turtle Wow can bring this lost content back to life. Well, that really is it, guys. The end. Hope you enjoyed the ride. It's been emotional. Abba.